Hello, Mr. Ferrer. Hello, Nahid. It is very nice to have you here today in Munich. Mr. Ferrer, could you explain us the reason why you came to Munich today? Uh, first of all, it's a joy to be here. I'm firstly here as a friend of Nahid, the artist. Uh, Nahid came uh, to me uh, five years ago when we were holding the uh, Timeless Audrey exhibit at the Hauptbahnhof in Berlin with this beautiful painting. Um, and she wanted to donate it to the cause, to the charity, to be uh, auctioned um, and to benefit the children. And at the time, um, I found one reason and then the next one and then the next one not to auction it uh, because I, I, I became uh, enamored with the painting after getting to know Nahid and knowing her story. Um, she really is, I think, uh, encapsulates what a new way of living uh, uh, humanitarian thoughts and a way of life and how living it every day uh, signifies. Not just sort of, you know, this is who we are and then we spend 15 minutes a day thinking about, well, what should I do to help society or to help children or to... I think it becomes a way of life just like it did um, for my mother uh, in the last five years of her life. It became an organic part of her life. And I think because of Nahid's story, which I'm sure she will tell you, um, her persona today is she's an artist, she's also a refugee. She's also someone who has known that feeling of the extended hand. And all of it together comes through in this wonderful bubbly personality that is very much a part of this painting, even though the image is of, of my mother, the emotion and the humanity in it is also Nahid. And that's why I became to, uh, to, 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 to love this painting and didn't sell it in the end. And it's all my fault, that's why we're here now, uh, uh, five years later. But there was also, and I'm gonna let her talk about it uh, for a second, um, uh, uh, or for more than a second, because she certainly deserves to have more than a second. But um, she did this, um, this first test with the wax, and that's what started a whole series of, um, of paintings uh, to benefit children, to speak, to bring awareness. And now I'm going to pass the microphone on to her, and she'll tell you a little bit more about how this began it all. Thank you very much. We are very interesting. <laughs> well... Thank you, I'm humble. <laughs> I'm embarrassed. Please, please say in <laughs> no, no, we, we keep it in English this okay. time, I think. Okay. It's, it's good. Um, the painting, exactly the story, this is how it started. A really wonderful, great relationship with, um, with somebody that, I mean, she inspired me my whole life, literally. You know, the teenies, um, teeny ages, it's really a tough age where you fight not only within yourself as a character, as a woman, to, to find the woman in you, but also because of the, the two different worlds that I was taken away from, from my home and thrown into cold water. And you have to find yourself in, in, in a different world that is not yours. And you really need um, heroes and inspirations and people that you can look up to that can put a backbone, a strong backbone behind you and say, it's going to be okay. Because you look at this example and you say, wow, um, she was a great mother. She was a beautiful woman. Uh, she was a great humanitarian. Um, it's just the, femi the feminine side, the strength uh, beside, uh, beside that, the, the, the negative and positive side of, of the sphere, both sides, everything is in this, um, in this woman. And if, if I was to uh, give an example of, a, of the perfect woman, if there was one, I would say she would she would have been it. And for me today, I always say that, you know, all these tiny little ideas of, for projects start when you're in the shower singing, you know, with bad voice and, and you say, hmm, wouldn't it be great if... And for me to sit here beside Sean today and, and because of Audrey Hepburn's portrait is truly one of those moments. Um, this relationship that, that started um, with this portrait and UNICEF um, is so dear to me because we both have the same vision. And there are very few visionaries these days in this world that don't take themselves so seriously also because of a great, beautiful, legendary name. Um, to actually not use it, but, 
but to use it in a way that 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 helps humanity because at the end of the day we're all human beings made of the same s flesh and bone and we have to fight for the evolution of mankind i mean if we don't who will and children they are our future so if we don't invest into them today then i don't want to hear anybody complaining about it tomorrow saying that what are they doing it's our job as parents also as humanitarians as people that have made it in this world and and we all have made it in this world so but there are so many people that need that to this 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 hand that has to be reached because i am i consider myself truly as the greatest testament of um those that have been helped by charitable organizations by foundations that um that are there to help exactly like refugees the way my my whole life story that i was born in the high society of afghanistan left everything behind take a walk over the mountains and start from zero many many times in the uh, in my life and to have foundations like unicef that have helped us personally and other foundations it made a difference in in the life of one person and this is a domino effect i always say that the first domino is that one person can change the lives of many and i know that sean and the fund that he has created and he's the founder of the fund the audrey hepburn children's fund and for me to have had the opportunity to work with sean on so many different projects and and i'm and i'm looking forward to them to the years to come to do even more and even if there would be one little child that we would make a difference in in her on his or his life that would be plenty thank you very much for this beautiful <laughs> um i want to say a few words about unicef as she said i was the founder 20 years ago uh, when our mother passed away um we were sure that had she gotten another five minutes, five days, five weeks, five years, she would have spoken about the children. It, just like it is a part of Nahid's life, it was a part of her life. And once you've been there and you have sort of crossed the line, you never really fully come back to our way of life. Um, last year I gave my resignation as a chairman of the Audrey Hepburn Children's Fund. My uh, younger brother Luca took over and I've become the honorary chair of the Audrey Hepburn Society at the U.S. Fund for UNICEF. That's their big donors club. And now, so I'm doing more of a f direct fundraising uh, responsibility. And uh, very often people come to me and say, why UNICEF? I so say, of course, UNICEF, because our mother experienced after World War II and spending it in Holland, which was one of the longest occupied countries during the war, but also a country where they really suffered hunger and, uh, and, and, uh, and therefore the help that came at the uh, end of the war was so meaningful. And uh, she never forgot that feeling. And so now we flash forward uh, 50 years later, um, she's had a beautiful career, the opportunity to be an independent woman in the 50s and the 60s, which is something that you have to go back to that mindset to understand what that really means. Um, this was her way to say thank you and her way to give back um, to, to, to a, a promise of no more Holocaust. And, um, and so this is why UNICEF. But in doing with UNICEF for the past 20 years, I always like to say the following. It all looks wonderful and the same when uh, we're at a beautiful cocktail or a lovely gala and here we're fortunate to have Sophie Tell as a partner and to host us in this beautiful space which speaks art even when you go to the bathroom. I mean, the, everything is, gives you the space and yet the good taste to start to think the right way. Um, but it all looks the same when we're here, when we're having the champagne and the this and Every organization has great leaders, and now you take a plane and you go to Somalia, and you arrive at the airport, there's no electricity, no water, no buses, no streets, no sewer, no hospitals, no teachers, no nothing. Now the list of wonderful gets very, very short. It's UNICEF, MSF, uh, uh, Save the Children, I mean, there's very few organizations, and when it comes, let's take it a step beyond, to actually be able to negotiate at a global level safety of children and mothers 
in situations of war and conflict, then UNICEF becomes the only one that is able to do that because um, their link to the UN. Now, but we must not forget that UNICEF was created at the end of the war and once its job was done, they said, the UN said to UNICEF, you can stay, but you have to pay your own way. So it's in a way, it's the Cinderella organization of the UN. It can live in the house, but it doesn't get a check every month. And so everything that supports UNICEF, 100% are voluntary donations. Yes, two-thirds of those donations come from governments, but governments put it in their budget when there's space. So if things get tight, sometimes they'll take a little bit from here and put it over there. And therefore, private individuals, corporations, it's all a business expense to them, so either they get a return, which is why these events are so important, because then they do get a return, but it's really individuals that make the difference. And it's, it's the reason why the society is so important and it makes such a big difference. Even five dollars makes a difference. One euro. That's why trick-or-treating was such a success for many years. Because, and you had kids, four kids, buy kids. So individuals make it, keep it alive. And UNICEF itself is an organization that sometimes is keeping countries afloat and alive just by the humanitarian work that it does because there's nothing else that defines the country in that moment than its people, than its women, and then its children. Um, on this note, I, I hope that you will join us this evening. Uh, it's a wonderful moment to be able to enjoy art, enjoy art that doesn't just have a sort of aseptic uh, meaning, intellectual meaning, uh, which in most cases you know, uh, the more important the art is and the least you're told you really understand what it's all about. Here it's about wonderful feelings, it's about people, uh, four people, four children, and so it's a wonderful sort of recirculating way of, of making uh, art uh, 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 organic to our own lives. Thank you very much. <laughs>